Welcome to my demonstration of drawing a Zippo lighter. I am going to draw it at the same size as my reference photo, and I use my pencil as a way to measure. I also use my pencil to figure out the angle of the shapes I am drawing. For example, here I line it up with the back angle of the top of the lighter. And I imagine that if my pencil were the hand of a clock, it would be pointing roughly towards one o'clock. This simple technique can be really accurate. I continue to draw in the biggest shapes I see, and I draw very lightly. I'm using an HB pencil. I continue to use my pencil to figure out if my measurements are accurate and my angles. Taking your time at this initial stage is crucial. Pay careful attention to the shapes, both to the proportions and the angles. No amount of detailing and shading will save a drawing that is poorly proportioned and poorly drawn. Once I'm happy with my bigger shapes, I'm ready to start drawing the smaller shapes. I continue to keep my lines quite light until I have the biggest shapes all drawn in. Once I'm happy with the proportions and the angles of these shapes, I will commit to the drawing by drawing a little bit darker. I continue to use the HB pencil and just add a little bit of pressure. I don't want my drawing to be really outlined, so I do not darken these lines too much. These lines will be absorbed by the shading that I will be putting in later. Drawing is about slow and careful observation, so don't rush this process. The shading and the details definitely make our drawing come to life, and there's a lot of magic in doing them but this is really where all the heavy lifting is done. Slow, methodical observation, and I am constantly checking and rechecking my measurements. Notice that my drawing paper is at the same angle as my reference paper, and if I turn one, I turn the other. This way my eyes can just keep scanning back and forth, checking for accuracy. At this stage, I'm ready to start shading. I also keep the shading quite light until I'm ready to commit to it. My initial shading is still done with my HB pencil. Once I'm happy with the values that I'm attaining, I will get a darker pencil, usually a 2B or a 3B. I wait until I'm towards the end of the drawing to put in the darkest darks. I don't reach for anything darker than a 2B until much later in the drawing. Those dark pencils smear a lot, and that's one reason I wait until the end. But also, if I go too dark too soon in the process, I will be spending a lot of time erasing and reestablishing my values. So for now, most of my values are done with an HB pencil. The biggest shapes of the Zippo lighter are pretty easy to figure out. It's really a cuboid, a skinny cube, open. And even the top of the lighter with the flint is another cuboid. When I draw, I try to think in terms of really simple, geometric, three-dimensional shapes. Then it's just a matter of carving in the details. I'm looking for my darkest darks and putting in a little bit of my HB graphite to darken those areas. It can be difficult to accurately judge the different values, 
all at once. So I start off by shading in the darkest areas. I'll come in later and shade the lighter areas and that will help me assess how much darker my dark shapes need to get. I know that the interior of this open cap will require quite a bit of dark shading. So I'm starting to darken that up already, but notice I'm doing this in layers. It's much easier to get darker shapes if we're willing to layer our values instead of trying to go in and press really hard to get the darkest dark we think we need. By working in layers to achieve our values, we are better able to control how dark they are. And they also lay down more smoothly. Relax into this. Shading can be a lot of fun and a little bit of a meditative practice. Don't rush yourself through your drawings. I know that the darks that I'm putting in now will get darker later, but I don't want to go in too soon, too dark. Again, I want to build up slowly. With my darkest darks getting in place, I can see that I need to really start darkening up, even if just slightly, the lighter areas of my lighter. With those dark darks in place, my lighter looks extremely white. Seeing values accurately is all about comparison. So now I'm ready to start darkening my lighter. I'm using the HB pencil and I am going very smoothly and lightly into these areas. The smaller you keep your stroke, the smoother your shading will be. As I darken the light areas, I can start to see how much darker my dark areas need to be. It's this constant back and forth that requires patience for correct shading. With both the drawing stage and the shading stage, I will constantly turn my paper to better fit the angle of my wrist. As I turn my drawing paper, I also turn my reference photo so that my eyes can easily scan back and forth between the two looking for differences. Now I have a first layer of graphite on all areas of my lighter. I used my eraser just to clean up a little bit of the smudges that were starting to develop. And now I'm using a blender, sometimes called a paper stump, to smooth out some of my shading. For bigger areas, I will use a Kleenex wrapped around my finger to smooth out the shading. Just know that when you smooth your shading this way, you're also darkening the areas. You're not just smoothing them out. You can use that to your advantage once you understand that, such as here when I want to darken some areas, instead of using my pencil, I'm using my blender. It has some graphite on it from doing the blending earlier. So in using it, I can get some subtle, darker shades in areas. It's 
It's time to darken the inside cap of the Zippo. I'm using a darker pencil now, a 2B. And again, using short strokes, laying in another layer of graphite to darken this area. I will also darken a few of the holes that I can see in the flint part of the lighter. I'm constantly looking back and forth between my drawing and my reference photo to be sure I'm seeing which areas need to be darkened or which areas might need to be lightened to create the correct values. As I'm nearing the end of my drawing of the Zippo, I realize I need to get a darker pencil to really punch up some of the darkest darks. I use a 4B for this. As I'm nearing the end of the drawing, although I'm happy with the way the lighter looks, overall I find the drawing somewhat boring and an idea starts forming in my head. Maybe it needs a cigarette butt. I'm putting in the final touches of my values making sure that my darks are as dark as I want them. And I think I'm ready to call the lighter done. So I took a picture of a cigarette butt and I placed the Zippo next to the cigarette to understand the proportions. I printed out my photo of the cigarette butt at the right size so that it is proportional to my Zippo in my drawing. And here I begin drawing in the same way I did the Zippo, very light lines and using my pencil to measure angles and proportions. Checking for widths, angles, and distances with my pencil has become quite natural for me. If when you first start doing it, it feels unnatural, just keep at it. You'll get better and better. Now I do it without even thinking about it. Once I'm happy with my drawing, I commit to it by darkening those lines. And right away, I start shading. This is the same process as I did with the Zippo lighter drawing. Sometimes it's difficult to gauge the values of an object that we want to draw when we see it in color. If that throws you, I would recommend that you print it out in black and white so you can see the values. I shade the filter quite a few times because I realized I needed it darker than I thought initially.
The cigarette portion of the cigarette butt is actually quite abstract. As I look at it, I approach it the same way as I approach the linear Zippo drawing. I look for the outline of the biggest shapes, then I darken in the shapes of the darkest darks. Once the biggest shape is drawn in and I've already added the darkest darks, I start drawing the smaller shapes I see within the cigarette butt. This is slow observation work, but it makes all the difference. Some of the shapes I see are medium tone and some are light. So I'm just working my way through them, not worried about what it looks like, but thinking more in abstract terms of how curved or thick these shapes are. Now I start blending. I'm cleaning up the edges with an eraser and now I'm starting to use my eraser to make those lighter spot marks that are on the filter. Even those spots are something I slow down and try to imitate from my reference picture. If I start making things up, they start looking cartoony really fast. Now I'm starting to drill down into the details of the crumpled up portion of the cigarette. I'm looking for the darkest areas and marking them in. I'm getting pretty close to being done with a cigarette butt. I'm just adding some final darks, cleaning up with my eraser just for some highlights. And once I have those tones done, I realize I need to come in once more for the darker tones and maybe to do some loose tobacco and ashes around it. A little bit of blending helps me soften some of those shade shapes. One more pass at the darkest edges I see, and I'll call it done. This is time consuming, but really makes all the difference in the realism. I hope you've enjoyed this demo. And here is my final drawing.